there my beautiful book lovers my name is Kimmy M and welcome to my book talk Valentine's Day it's upon us and I thought why not share ten of my all-time favorite romance book that I think you should read them you have to reread them if you have read them already and just you know feel the love feel the giggles feel all the warm feelings and at the same time feel all those sadnesses the crying the heartbreak all the other stuff the fun stuff that comes with romance and so for today, I'm going to share 10 of my all-time favorite books, the romance books, and they're not all happy or doesn't have the happy ending, but they're still just beautiful. They still gives you all of those warm feelings, I guess, I hope. And so let's get into them. First, we have one of the most classic love story out there, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This book, it's about these three characters that are just perfect for one another honestly this book is something that i'm pretty sure most of us have read it by now if not please do read it it's not one of those classic that you will have a hard time understanding it's super easy to get into it and especially jane austen she is the queen of writing witty interesting lovable characters and just nice funny entertaining events so the book, as we mostly know, it's about Mr. Darcy. He is a very wealthy man, has a high standard for what he's going to marry or ever. And so he meets Miss Elizabeth Bennet. She comes from a family that it's not as wealthy. Her family, especially her mother and two of her sisters are a little bit questionable, but all in all, a good of a decent of a family. But Mr. Darcy is like, no, I don't like them. Look at her mother and everything. No. And Elizabeth Bennet is like, look at this arrogant, judgmental man. Absolutely not. And so we have this very iconic enemies to lovers and how they start to see one another in different light. Elizabeth will understand that Mr. Darcy has a heart of gold, honestly, and he will help if it's needed. And Mr. Darcy will see that Elizabeth is so different from most of her family and she really has a good head on her shoulder and so it's really about these two characters coming together and realizing you know it's not always like the first impression sometimes can be the right thing or like you know you get it right but not always and sometimes you have to give people the second chance and really like try to get to know them better and so it's a classic if you want to read a romance you have to read this one. So it's there. Then we move to the next classic, and that's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Charlotte Bronte is... So Jane Austen writes about all of these romance that are really... Like they have the pink sort of filter on them, and it could get a little bit sad. It could get a little bit like different events happen and whatnot, but still at the end, we have, you know, that very pink, bubbly, lovely filter. With Charlotte Bronte, you have the, like, the gothic, so you have that, like, sort of a, not a black filter, but like a gray sort of-ish filter on it. It's just still beautiful. Jane Eyre is one of my all-time favorite books ever. It's about this character, Jane. She's an orphan. She has a lot of hard time to take care of herself as an orphan and then eventually Mr. Rochester hires her to take care and like nanny this child and she's like okay great I'm gonna do it and then eventually she starts to fall in love with him. Mr. Rochester is a little bit like Mr. Darcy, a little moody, a little bit like mysterious, you don't know what's going on with him and also what's going on with his house. Um, but Jane cannot help it and she starts to develop feelings for him and this starts really about these two characters that how despite the fact that different they are they will come together and what will happen to them and what is the story behind everything and so I highly recommend this book again it's a different sort of vibe from like Pride and Prejudice but still we have the happy ending and it's a sort of a lovely little romance there and if you have not read it yet you have to read it. Next, we have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book, oh my god. So it's a retelling of a very well-known Greek mythology about Achilles, but it's done just perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 
because it really is. This book, despite the other two, doesn't really have a good happy ending. I mean, if you know anything about the myth, you know. And also, it's one of those like very well known books by now that it's as classic as the other two, honestly. A lot of people have talked about it so much that it's just like, you know, it's out there. You should know. If you have not read it, 100% do. If you have read it, it's time to reread it now. The story, it's about Achilles and Patroclus. He, Patroclus is the son of this king. He has done some bad things and like, you know, violence and whatnot. And so he has been sent to this little place that Achilles is there and they're being training together. They start to bond this friendship. They are just like perfect buddies and just beautiful there. And then Helen is kidnapped. And so all the Greek heroes, they're going to rescue her. And Achilles is like, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna prove myself and all of those stuff. Patroclus is not super sure about it, but he's his best friend. He loves him. And like, you know, all of those feelings and everything, he's like, fine, I will come too. And so they go, but God. So anyway, you will cry. And I don't want you to cry when you're reading a romance, but sometimes it's necessary to remember that things could go wrong. Things could not work out. I'm not going to spoil any of these books because like, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of them, a lot of people have already heard and read, but even if there's like 1% out there that has not read it yet, let's not spoil it for them. So it's not a very happy ending, but it's still, it's so beautifully done. It's just touch your heart so much that you have to read it. Just please do. Then we have Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This book, similar to Song of Achilles, not so much of a happy ending, but I still recommend it. I cried so much for this book, dear God. If you have also not seen the movie, you should 100% do. This story, it's about Lou, Louisa. She is this lovely bubbly girl lives in a very small little city with her she has her boyfriend she has her family and doing her stuff and then she's like i need a job and that's how she meets will will is this very rich hot guy that unfortunately had an accident and so now from like neck down he cannot move and so he's really tied to a wheelchair and his family are very worried about him feeling that he's being very depressed lately so they hire Lou really to just you know be his companion and she's like sure I can I can do that and they start to kind of get to know each other and Will is just like no you're too bubbly and like what's wrong with you why are you always so happy and especially because like you know the event that has happened to him is very traumatic and so because of that he's going through a lot but Lou is really trying to show him that how life can be beautiful how there's still so many things up there and so this story is really about these two characters to get to know one another trying to change each other's lives and it's just so god like it again touches your heart so much and it's so beautiful and it's one of those things that raise this question that you know about life death relationship love and all of that does it worth it does it like sometimes isn't it just better to have it even if it's for a short time if it's happened to not have it at all all of those things i highly recommend it again i don't want you to cry but sometimes it happens and still if you have not read it do read it, but have a pile of tissues with you while you're going to read it. Then we have The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. This book, it's so bubbly. We have two very sad books, so let's move to another bubbly one. It's beautiful. I loved it so much. It's very cute and quirky. It's about this scientist, Don. And he's a little bit awkward when it comes to women. He has never been on a second date. And so because of that, he's like, you know what? I'm going to create this project, him being a scientist. And it's like, it's going to be like my wife project. I'm going to create this questionnaire to find the perfect woman, the woman for me, that it has everything that I want. And he's like very has high hopes that he will be able to find his true love through that. And then we have Rosie. She's everything that Dawn doesn't want really, but she's on her quest. She's trying to find her father 
And so these two team up and they're trying to find her father through like DNA testing. And it's really about these two going on all these little journeys together. And then Dawn realizing that love is not always what you think. It's not really based on science. No matter what you do, it just doesn't work like that. And also Rosie is coming to term with her life and her journey. And so it's beautiful. I enjoyed it. Again, it's like very cute and bubbly and it's also very interesting to see Don and his very like scientific mind, how he sees things. And so I, I read it a couple of years ago, but it still, it was like so good that it stayed with me. And if you want to read a book that feel good, you know, like after crying for the other two, if you want something to bring you back to like a lot of a more happy sort of feelings, then I suggest this one. Then we have The Stationery Shop of Tehran by Marjan Kamali. This book, I mean, we're going back to <laughs> not so much of a happy ending, although this one has, this one is a like a medium sort of ending that it's happy, but it's not completely the happy ending that you think might be the happy ending, but it's still, I'm Persian. So this book touched me even more. We have Roya and then we have Batman. And these two characters, um, they meet in a stationery shop in Tehran and they start to fall in love through poetry and poem and their love for books. And so it's really about them as a like young adults and their young love and their first love and them trying to make sense of it. And they, they want to marry, but unfortunately Batman's mother, she's very against it. She has a lot of high hopes for his son, her son. And so because of that, she doesn't want him to marry Roya, which, you know, she's not really rich or from a very well-known family or anything. So she's trying to like, you know, separate them. And the story, it's about them, everything that happens, them moving on and, in 50, 60 years later, they come together by an event. It was like a sort of an accidental sort of situation. And to see what went wrong, what happened, why happened. And I enjoyed it so much. It was so beautiful. And especially because like you see them as young kids and then as adults and especially like as old adults. And so to really see how all of these emotions, sometimes they never go away. Sure, like you move on, you marry another person and you love the other person, you have kids and all of that, but like a little bit of that feeling will stay, you know? And so I enjoyed it so much. I haven't seen too many people talk about it. So because of that, I really wanted to include it in this video because I really think that it deserves to be one of those books that you should read 100% if you're looking for a good romance. Then we have Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmer. This book, I actually recently read this one and it's a crossover between Bridgerton and like Pride and Prejudice in a sort because like we have a duke, but also we have these two, two characters, the duke that, you know, he's a duke. He's like very from high there, super rich and all of that. And then we have Annabelle that she's a country girl. She's like pretty poor. And so because of that, like, you know, we have those differences class and Annabelle, she wins this scholarship to attend Oxford. Oxford finally has this woman in college. And so she finally is able to study and continue her education. So she moves to the city, but in return for a scholarship, she needs to join this um, women's movement group that they're trying to get the parliament to vote for women's right to vote. And so she's doing that and her kind of little mission is to get close to the Duke, Sebastian Devereaux, and to really try to convince him to like vote for them, support them and all of that. But then the thing is like these two characters are just not working together really. And um, the story is really about them, how their opinions is going to change about one another, how their relationship is going to change. And I really like this because with most, like almost all of these books, the reason that I love them is that yes, the romance is the main thing, but at the side, they all have that extra bit of theme to them that I just adored and loved it so much. And this one was this like woman movement. And especially because like, I was talking about that, like 
yes, back then we always romanticize this about, oh, the, like that era with the dresses and like, you know, the balls and all of that. But at the same time, the hardship that women had. And so it's really showing these women trying to fight for it, try to fight for their right, for their right to vote. And so it was very lovely. I enjoyed it. The ending was a little bit too long. I mean, it, like it was really like by the end that I was like, okay, we don't need any more new conflicts. We can be done. But it wasn't one of those books that was like so long that it was just like, I don't enjoy this book anymore. It was just like, mm, it's okay. I still enjoyed it so much. So that was the reason. Like I was thinking, should I like include it in this list or not? But then I was like, I enjoyed everything else. So you know what? Let's just add it. It was very good. So it deserved to be on this list. Then we have The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This book is about Anne. She's burned out. She's this violinist. She has went viral with this video. And so now she's burned out because no matter how much she practice, she feels that she's not ever going to be as good as she was and she cannot really top it anymore. So she's just going through a lot. At the same time, she has this boyfriend that he is like, you know what, I want to open relationship and just leaves. And so Helen is, um, I'm sorry, and she's like, you know what, fine. I'm gonna have open relationship too. I'm gonna have as many one night stands as I can and as many men that are just like, almost red flags as, as bad boys as they can be and that's how she meets Guan um so he is like tattooed he ride a motorcycle and he's just like you know that image of bad boy and so she's like great he's a perfect person but then they don't have the one night stand not on the second time, not on the third time, simply because Anne is going through so much. And also at the same time, because she feels that Juan is really looking at her differently. He really cares about her in a sense of who she is and pays attention to her and wants her to be like comfortable, do what she likes and all of that. And so because of that, the book's really about how their relationship changed, how she's trying to overcome all of these anxieties and like the, the burnout and all of that. And again, that's the reason that I liked it because like as much as it's about the romance, it's really about these two characters, especially Anne and her struggles and how she's trying to deal with them. It was a very lovely book. I listened to this one. It was one of those books that had everything that you could ask for. And it was just so enjoyable that it should have been on this list and it should be on your list too. Then we have The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. This book. Oh my, it's okay. So first of all, this is based on a Kylo Ren fan fiction. And I was just like, yes, absolutely. 100%. I'm gonna read it. And I enjoyed it. It's about Olive and Adam. Olive is a third year PhD student. She has this friend and an ex-boyfriend. And the ex-boyfriend is like trying to move on, but he's worried about her. And she's like, you know what? No, no don't worry, I'm fine. And by some sort of accidents and events, she trying to prove that she's fine and she's moving on, she ends up kissing Adam, which he is a professor in this um, university and he's a, like a very broody sort of a man. You can get a sense of my style. <laughs> like all of these men just like broody and like, you know, just like very moody and all of them mysterious type. And so Adam is like that again, but then they start to fake dating and which is like one of my favorite troops. And so it's really about them, how their relationship changes, evolves, they come together and know each other better. And also the extra aspect that I really love, it's about women in STEM because in general, every other field that it's out there, were male dominant for centuries because like for many, many centuries, women were not able to study or work or anything. So with STEM, it's also very much that even to this day. And so it's really about Olive's struggles with how she's trying to make her way to prove that she's as smart and as brave and as courageous as the other people and the men in her field. And so I really enjoyed that. That aspect was very nice, especially because Ali Hazelwood, her 
she is neuroscientist if I'm not wrong and so she's talking from experiences and because of that I very much enjoyed it the digits too are just so perfect honestly that it's like one of those books that if you want a good romance that you just want to read it in a couple of hours that gives you all of those like giggly vibes that like you used to get when you were super young and reading fan fictions this is it like it's just like so adorable Ugh, just read it then last but not least oh my god this one which i'm sure you should know it's book lovers by emily henry this book i have mentioned before is the book that actually got me back into romance because i stopped reading romance for quite a long time and not just on purpose it's just like i didn't came across a book that i wanted to read and then i read this book and i was like oh i missed this feeling i'm going to start reading romances again and so we have Nora, she's a literacy agent, and then we have Charlie, who is an editor, and these two are nemesis. And again, we have enemies to lovers. So the story is about Nora being a very, you know, she's all about her clients, she works hard, loves books, all of us, and so she's really about work, 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 and then her sister is like, you know what you need? Let's go on a trip together let's go to this like little town to kind of like fall in love with the town boys and like you know enjoy all of that and whatnot and she's like sure why not because our sister is like you know you have to be your own main character for your own book and so they go there but then Nora keeps coming across Charlie by accidents different events and whatnot and they really don't like each other and this story it's really about them realizing why they don't like each other maybe they do like each other maybe they can like each other even more and it's just so enjoyable them coming together it's just one of those things that you're reading the book and you're like oh my god you two i love to call them idiots because how can you not see how perfect you two are for one another so i hope you enjoy it as much as i did because i was just reading this book like non-stop i finished it in a couple of hours simply because i needed to see what will happen to them even though like you know in a sense that they will get together because like if not you're going to throw the book out of a window but it's still it was just like i, I have I had to see how they come together and that's how I ended up finishing it in a couple of hours. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already read it. Again, if you not, read it. If you have, reread it. This is the perfect time. I mean, romance, you can read it anytime, honestly, but now that it's like Valentine's Day is coming up, let's reread romance again and again. And that's it all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. There were so many books that I just like, all of these books. I just got so excited about them because I love them so much, all of these characters. And I hope you enjoyed this video too. And until the next video, happy reading.